Christian Communications Network from Belfast, Northern Ireland, welcomes you to today's programme. Here is Deciding Your Destiny with Dr. Cecil Stewart, OBE. I want to talk about the power of His presence. I think that is the most wonderful thing that any person on this earth could ever have is to have the presence of Almighty God Amen. in your heart and in your life. And that's why he went to the cross. That's why he took the guilt and the condemnation of all of us on himself. And that is why he shed his blood. That is why he sweat great drops of blood in Gethsemane's garden before he ever went to the cross. That is why he suffered the beatings and the reproach and the striping until his back was like a ploughed field. That is why he took it all to the cross, because he wanted us to enjoy his presence, not only in heaven, but on earth. And the scripture says in Romans chapter 5, 17, For if by one man's offense death reigned through one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. If through Adam, who disobeyed God and brought sin and condemnation on the whole world, if through one man, death came upon the whole world, much more, it says, I love those two words, say much more. Much more. He says, those who receive abundance of grace, and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life through one Jesus Christ. This is big. There's more in this verse than you would imagine. We know the story of how sin separated us from God. And sin will always separate you from God. Sin is not your friend, sin is your enemy. Sin will ultimately take people to a lost eternity. But the good news is not one person more needs to go to a lost eternity because the cross has provided a remedy for every sinner to repent and be born again and to receive forgiveness yeah. and not only that but to rule and to reign in life salvation is not just an escape from hell and a ticket for heaven it is ability of god to rule and reign in this life and we have proven that over the years when we were attacked and many different ways. Some of you will know testimony of my wife's healing from cancer when she was given days to live. And when it seemed there was no hope with myself in so many different ways, attack of anxiety and depression, Satan tried to take us out before we ever got started. And the devil is not attacking you because you're of no relevance to the world He's attacking you because he's afraid of you. Yeah. God Almighty has a call on your life. And I speak to everyone in this gathering tonight and those watching by television. God has a purpose in your life. And the scripture tells us there in Romans 2 verse 10, sorry, Ephesians 2 10, that we are his workmanship created in Christ to good works, which he before ordained that we should walk in them. Before you ever were born, God Almighty had a plan for your life. And it wasn't a plan to live your life under depression or fear or strife or anger or disease. He ordained you to live a victorious life. Yes, we've all had struggles. Yes, it would be wrong of me to give you the impression that every day was a day when we were jumping over the moon. No, there's been days of valleys, there's been days of tr struggles, there's been days when we were sick and depressed and in, under pressure, but thank God it didn't stay that way. Yes. He arose, <laughs> Jesus is alive. And because he lives, we live also. Amen. So we're no victims anymore, we're victors yes. in the name of Jesus. We're more than conquerors. Notice what that verse says. Those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life through Christ Jesus. It's those who receive it. It's been made available, yes, 
when Jesus died on that cross, when his nails, hands were nailed to that cross and his feet were nailed and his head was crowned with thorns and so much more suffering than I could even begin to describe. It was for you, it was for us, it was for all of us. And because he took the thorns on his head, we don't have to have any problem again with our minds. He healed us in our minds. He healed us in our bodies. He healed us in our spirit. He healed us everywhere we hurt. And we do not need to pay the bill twice. It's already been paid. And Jesus paid it all at the cross. And we live in the good of his provision. Hallelujah. We are arisen with him. And we don't have to tell, tolerate the devil. We tell the devil, get yourself off in Jesus' name. There's no place for you here, devil. I'm redeemed property. I've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. So why should we live as slaves when we are kings and priests unto God and we're more than conquerors? And he tells us here that his grace is not just mere getting saved, but it is also receiving abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. You see, righteousness can never be earned. You can never get to heaven through your own righteousness. We're all familiar, I'm sure, with the verse in Ephesians 2 yet. By grace you are saved through faith. It is not of yourself, not of works, lest anyone should boast. His righteousness is a gift. If we could have got to heaven through good works and through living the best we could and doing the best we could, then the cross was unnecessary, the resurrection was unnecessary, but we could never have saved ourselves. We were eternally doomed. We were eternally lost. And Jesus came to reconcile us back to the Father. The power of his presence coming into this world, going to that cross, even before he ever went to the cross, we know his life. He went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him, it says in Acts 10, 38. So when he was on this earth, he was constantly lifting people. He was showing people they were valuable. He was showing people they were included. He never came to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. When I was growing up small, teen, well, probably 10, 12 years old, we used to attend little meetings, faith mission meetings. And they used to sing a chorus, he did not come to judge the world, he did not come to blame. He did not only come to seek, it was to save he came. And when we call him Savior, we call him by his name. He is the Savior, not only of your soul from a lost eternity, he's the Savior of your life. He saves you when you make wrong choices. Every one of us have made mistakes, made wrong choices, had wrong attitudes, judged sometimes. Have you ever made a mistake and judged somebody? I have, <laughs> but I'm so glad his mercy endures forever. And he forgives all who would come and repent and gives you a fresh start. Hallelujah. Those who receive, millions of people are still lost, millions, even billions. But it's not because there was no provision. It's not because there's no salvation. It's not because there's no grace for them. The gift of righteousness is available. Those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign. What does grace mean? It is, yes, the favor of God. It is forgiveness, yes. But it's more. It is God's ability in us to do what we could never do ourselves. He gives us the ability to live an overcoming life over our own negative ways of life, because every one of us were born with a negative mindset. Many times people suffer with a sense of inferiority, sense of guilt, mistakes they've made, and they feel like they have no real mission or authority in this world. But I want to tell you, you were made in the image of God. You were made to walk in his presence. You were made to enjoy his presence. And we, each day, can live in the power of his presence if we receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness through Jesus Christ. This really means that instead of us accepting every thought that comes to us, 
that's negative. Pastor quoted it earlier, Philippians 4, whatever things are a good report, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are going to be edifying, there's a whole list there. Think on these things. That means we have a choice. Amen. We have a choice what enters our mind. Uh, I heard somebody using the illustration some time back about going through the airport when you're traveling and you, you step into those machines and you're, uh, you know, it shows up what's in your pockets and if there's something there that's not allowed to go on board, you're stopped and you have to give it up, give it over. Well, I think we should put our thoughts through radar <laughs> and not take them through <laughs> on our journey. Amen? Amen. Refuse to take thoughts of anxiety. Yes. Refuse to take thoughts of guilt and condemnation. Refuse to take thoughts of judgmental of other people because that only hurts you. Let's take them through God's radar and say, no, that doesn't belong with me. I'm a new creation person. I have the mind of Christ according to Philippians 2, verse 15, I believe it is, maybe it's verse 5. But we have the mind of Christ in us. And so we don't need to carry that baggage of self-condemnation, of negativity and burdens that Jesus already took at the cross. That's what the message of the cross is about, the death and resurrection of Jesus. It shouts loud and clear, I took it all. Amen. Isaiah 53, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was laid on Jesus and by his stripes you were healed. Amen. He did it. So we don't need to pay the bill over. We don't need to meditate upon these things. So we have the ability now, instead of taking on board the hurts of the past, thinking them over, making them bigger, making mountains out of molehills, and then spending all your days to climb in the mountain. But God wants us to renew our minds. And that is what sets us free when our minds are renewed according to Romans 12, 3. So we don't have to take the hurts and disappointments with us or give our attention to those things. We have been given a brand new life and renewing of our mind as a process. Yes, we're born again instantly. Our spirit becomes brand new. But our mind takes time to be renewed. Amen? Amen. And sometimes it means a lot of study in the Word, but it's worth it a thousand times over. <coughs> because his word will transform your life and change your whole life. 1 Peter 5, 7 reminds us, casting all your cares upon him because he cares for you. Every care, every anxiety, every fear about the future. Sometimes people get a bad report from the doctor or they feel bad and they start to imagine the very worst things. But I know what it's like to be told the worst. <laughs> and fear tries to get a grip on you. I was told in 2003 I had a cancerous tumor and they could promise me absolutely nothing. I was told years before that that I had tuberculosis and severe depression. Now that could put an end to your life if you give in to that. But I knew another report. Amen. Amen. That he took my sickness. Amen. That he took my depression. Amen. That he took every form of disease. So why should I take something that Jesus already took? So by his grace and mercy, I resisted it. Yes. Now it took some time, the battle of, is sometimes tough. We have to fight the fight of faith. Yes. That's why you need the word in you to say, no, this is not in my will. This is not God's word and God's purpose. Yes. I refuse it in Jesus' name. Amen. I will not accept depression as a part of my life. I'm not depressed. I quoted this last week when I was preaching in Belfast, how that uh, Jensen Franklin said, I'm too anointed to be disappointed. <laughs> I'm too blessed to be depressed. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So remember, you're anointed. Yes. And turn the lights on. When bad things start happening around you, don't stand and stare at the bad things. Turn on the good lights. Amen. Get more good things happening. When the enemy's attacking you in two or three years of your life, go ahead and sing about the good things God has done. Think about the benefits he's given you. Don't meditate over your problems. Somebody said if you brood over your troubles, you'll have a hatch. And it's true. 
if you brood over your troubles, you just bring more out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we all have trouble and struggles. Uh, trouble's inevitable, but misery is optional. You don't have to be miserable. We can rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. I love what it says in Proverbs 4, 23. It says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life, or the flows of life. Guard your heart. In other words, don't get your focus on all the negative stuff. I know that in this country at the moment, for the last many weeks, the media has focused in on the negative of politicians, and of all the wrongs that's gone on, and what might be discovered and all these things. We can't allow our minds to dwell on those things. We must think the word and live in the kingdom if we're going to be able to be strong, to bring some hope to those around us. We can't afford ourselves to be overcome by the same old way of thinking as the world. Otherwise, how can we help anybody? And one of the things that keeps me spurned on to walk in victory is that I know other people are gonna need help. And how am I gonna help anybody if I myself am down under a load of care, if I myself am uh, struggling with the same things. Yes, we struggle at times, but the good news is we have the grace of God to cause us to rule and reign in life. Instead of life reigning over us, we rule over it. Amen, you're a king and a priest according to First Peter 2.9. We've been made kings and priests unto God. And so look up these scriptures and meditate upon them. I want us to focus on a story in Matthew 21. Uh, obviously, I can't read this all. You need to read verse 1 through 16. It is the story of Jesus' journey into Jerusalem before his crucifixion. It is the story of him being brought on the donkey and the colt and how he was led and in fact, he was lifted up onto the, the colt and the donkey, and everybody could see him. And as they went toward Jerusalem to cut down the palm trees for the road, and to put their clothes on the road, and they prepared for his presence. And as they went forward, they sang, and the children sang, and there was a marvelous celebration as they entered into Jerusalem. And the scripture says, when the people heard all this, they asked the question, who is this? And they said, this is Jesus. I believe when we come together and journey with Jesus in worship and in praise and work together in unity, <laughs> the world will start to ask, who is this? And will they be able to see Jesus in us? They lifted Jesus up on the back of this little animal, and they carried him and made a way for him to put him in his proper position where the whole world could see him. And as he journeyed to Jerusalem, you can read the story carefully in Matthew 21, there was a moving in the city. The Bible says the city was moved. And I believe the time is now at hand when the cities are going to be moved by the presence of Jesus again. The towns are going to be moved and awaking and ask, who is this? The power of his presence will awaken people out of their spiritual slumber, will awaken people to the reality of their inheritance, will open their eyes to see that Jesus did take every grief, every guilt, every sorrow, every burden, every sickness, every disease at the cross. He took it all. He didn't leave us to carry part of it. He took it all. And the scripture says, in 1 Peter 2, 24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. So he took your sin and sickness at the same time on the same cross. Every burden, every grief, every guilt, Jesus paid it all. So we don't need to go on life's journey with our heads down and our hearts overburdened. We should be going in life's journey, ruling and reigning, because Jesus lives in us now. 
He's no longer out there somewhere. He's in our hearts. And when we receive him, he transforms our lives. So let me give you a few key points in the short time I have left in this particular part of the message based on Matthew 21. It's really about the power of his presence in your life. And as I said at the beginning, the greatest blessing and benefit you can ever have in your whole life is to have the presence of Jesus in your life. If you have the presence of Jesus in your life, you can face any challenge. Amen. And so I mentioned some of these things that happened to us, and I, I don't take the time always to tell the detail, but you can get the detail if you read some of our literature, and we will tell you more about it. But when Evelyn was given days to live, it was 1 Peter 2.24 that gave us the victory. And we realized he already took it by whose stripes you were healed. So that meant we had another report and we were able to say, no, we refuse this report. And therefore, yes, it took a period of time, but the time come when X-rays showed her totally clear from every sickness and every disease. Amen. And the same happened to me with depression and anxiety. Whenever they said the TB is no longer there. Yes, there's a scar in your lung, but the TB is dead. Amen. The depression lifted, yes, Took a while, but two, three months. I began to praise the Lord in the darkest days and realize that praise brings the victory. Amen. And to shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph yeah. and to lift my voice. And I tell you one thing, the devil gets shocked when you praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. In fact, the scripture says in Psalm 150, it binds the evil kings with chains. The demonic powers are paralyzed when you and I react in the very opposite to the world and we begin to praise instead of complaining, instead of blaming, we begin to lift our voice and become part of the answer. And God is looking for solution providers. And we are solution providers because Jesus is in our hearts. We're not part of the problem, we're part of the answer. And God has a great plan. Before there ever was a problem in your life, God had a plan for you. And it wasn't a plan for you to live in defeat and depression and go down under the weather or live under circumstances. You have been redeemed to rule and to reign in life. Those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall rule and reign in life. So point number one, they're prepared for his presence. As you study this story in Matthew 21, you'll find that Jesus said to two of his disciples, go across to the village opposite and you'll find a colt and a donkey. Loose him, he's tied, and bring him to me. And if anybody asks you why, just tell them the Lord has need of him and they'll let him go. So they did this and they found that was exactly what happened. And they brought the colt and the donkey. And then they lifted Jesus up on this little colt and had already put their clothes on him on the back of the animal. They had already paved the way on the road ahead, put their clothes down, they had cut branches down, and they prepared the way. So we need to prepare for his presence. Amen. They were going to bring Jesus along the road into Jerusalem. We can bring his presence with us if we prepare for it. How do you prepare? Listen to his voice and do what he says. Jesus said to do this, I would get those animals and get ready. Bring them to me. And also as they prepared in terms of praise and thanksgiving, there was a manifestation of his presence and they became more aware of his presence as they moved forward. I want to tell you, we need to get on the move. Amen. I said it's time to get on the move. Amen. We're on the move. Amen. We're not on retreat. We're advancing. We're not going backward, we're going forward. Because Jesus is with us. We have the power of his presence with us. And the devil can't stand up to the presence of Jesus. 
he runs. The name of Jesus is above every name. And at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. So they prepared for his presence. They prepared transport. We are the vehicle that carries the presence of Jesus. Amen? We are the temple of the Holy Spirit, the scripture tells us. And in Psalm 1611, it says, He will show us the path of life. In his presence is fullness of joy. At his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. So how can we bring his presence? By living a life that's in line with his word. Amen. A life of faith, a life of praise, a life of gratitude. Develop an attitude of gratitude, not of griping and complaining. Let's be totally different than the world. We are of the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. And so as we develop this lifestyle, we will be preparing for his presence. We'll be preparing transport to bring the presence of Jesus out into the dark world, to the hurting, to the broken, you know. Two people came to my office about three weeks ago, I suppose, and they had seen the program, one of the television programs, and they had needs. And Two people traveled from Galway and I don't think they'd heard much. In fact, I, I know they'd heard hardly anything of the Word of God or the love of God until they saw the programs and their life was really changed and they came to the office. And the good news is that both those people invited Jesus into their heart, Amen. right in the office. Amen. Amen. His presence. In fact, when we prayed for one of them, Stephen was there and one of them was really broken. The power of the Holy Spirit just came on that person and they were changed. You see, when we have the presence, people's faith comes alive. They see there's another life. There's a greater life. We're not here to live a life of guilt and condemnation. We're here to rule and reign. We've let the devil rule over us long enough. Now it's time for us to rule and reign. It's time for us to say, get out of my home, devil. Get your hands off our community. Get your hands off our cities. We are the redeemed of the Lord. We carry the presence of the Lord everywhere. And when his presence comes, it makes all the difference. So we have different thought life. We have different words, we have different attitudes. We love people. We lift people. We have nothing bad to say about people. We're here to lift them. Every one of us are born with faults and problems, still have them. But thank God, he looked beyond my faults and saw my need. And he loves us anyway. Amen. Isn't that good? Well, I give the Lord a hand. They're prepared for his presence. Start preparing for his presence. Take time out every day and just stand alone with the Lord, worshiping him. Sometimes it might be three or four in the morning. It might be in the middle of the day. But give a piece of time all the time, every day. And don't just come asking God. Come thanking him that he went to the cross, that he paid the supreme price, that what he did for you not only affects your life on this earth, but affects you for all eternity, that you have been saved from a lost eternity, that you have assurance of eternal life. That's enough to praise him every day, every day. Amen. If he never did anything else for you, so let's be people of praise. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Be people of praise. Be people of good report. Thank him what he did for you. What did David say in Psalm 103? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He forgives all of my iniquities. He heals all of my diseases. He redeems my life from destruction. He's, been, he's redeemed us. He, crowned us with loving kindness and tender mercies. Amen. It even says, he fills my mouth with good things so that my, my, my uh, youth is renewed like the eagle. Amen. You can get a lot younger if you live in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. He can renew your youth, you know. Amen. But God wants you to enjoy good health. Amen. He wants you to live 
a life of victory. Philippians 2, 5, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. We can let the mind of Christ be in us. In other words, we can think like Jesus thinks. And if we think like Jesus thinks, we're going to talk like Jesus talks. And we're going to walk like Jesus walks. And the scripture says, as he is in this world, so are we. So we have power to walk in authority and dominion. I know the devil hates this message. But I lived through this. I knew what it was to be defeated. I knew what it was to be sick and anxious and full of worry. In fact, I was a professional worrier. When I wasn't worrying, I was worrying in case I should have been worried. And people are like that. And the enemy will pour on worry on you. But he took my burdens. Amen. Amen. So give over the problems. There are things we can't change. Maybe family connections that really grieve you, that, that get to you. No, give it over and get on. That's what this Bible study says. Hope builders. Give it over and get on. Let the Lord deal with those. You can't change them anyway. And let him work on them. And those loved ones that are away from the Lord or maybe have said negative things and there's hurts and offense. Give it over and pray for them and love them and keep blessing them. And the presence of the Lord is going to come upon them. Because we cannot change them ourselves. But if we give them over, he will change them. Remember that scripture in Romans 12, 3. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So when we are transformed by the renewing of our minds, it lets us know his will. It becomes clear. Do not be conformed. In other words, do not think like the world thinks, but be transformed. Think totally different by the renewing of your mind, and then you will prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Number two, they lifted their voices. Remember, number one, they prepared for his presence. Number two, they lifted their voices. As they traveled on the journey with Jesus, they lifted their voices. Acts chapter 4, 24, it says, when they heard this report of persecution, they lifted their voices in one accord and began to give thanks. You can read it yourself. They'd been threatened, some had been put in prison because of the healing of the man at the beautiful gate, the lame man. Great persecution came from the religious people. And the scripture says, they threatened them and tried to silence them. But they wouldn't keep silent. They kept sharing the love of God. They kept speaking the name of Jesus. And then when they heard this negative report from those that were in authority, instead of being worried and depressed, they lifted their voices and gave thanks. Amen. And then it says in Psalm 107, verse 2, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. So I think we need to do this more and more. Lift your voice. I know it's good to pray quietly, but it's good also to lift your voice together. And when you come to church, you can all lift your voice in one accord and worship him and praise him. And when you do, there's a release of the presence of the Lord. God inhabits the praises of his people. He dwells in the power of his presence is a life-giving force. And you will benefit it greatly because you know how to make the right choices. When you live in his presence, you have his mind, you have his thoughts. And you'll find you can make the right choices. And know how to handle offense. And know how to handle situations that are difficult. And have an attitude of gratitude. Amen. I tell the story of a meeting I had in Limerick many years ago in Limerick. And I spoke along these lines of the importance of attitude and being grateful to the Lord. There was a man in that meeting, I didn't know who he was, but a number of people came to the Lord and, and for other needs as well. And then I was in Dublin one day walking on O'Connell Street and this man came running over and said, I was in your meeting in Limerick, he said, and what you said has transformed my life. His name was Liam somebody. He, he had come to salvation. And I said, what did I say? He said, you said, 
Your problem is not the problem. It's your attitude to the problem that's the problem. And that's true. We can have all kinds of problems. But if we have the presence of Jesus, we can have an attitude of gratitude. And because we have an attitude of faith, the problems will be overcome. Amen. And so when I was told in 2003 about this cancerous tumor, about they told me in detail it would shut down the vital organs and I would have to get urgent attention. They said you have this, uh, you have this tumor on your main artery and we can't promise you anything. But the only hope is surgery right away. And so after prayer, we were due to go to Tanzania for a major mission. And so we had to make a decision. But after prayer, I felt very strongly, no, I'm not to have the surgery. I have no problem with people having surgery. Thank God for the medical profession and those who are involved in helping people's health. But I felt in my heart, no, it's, it's not to be. And you may say, well, what happened? I didn't have surgery, and here I am today, stronger than I was then. To God be the glory. To Him be the glory. To Him be the glory. Okay, number one was prepare for His presence. That's the way you live every day. Don't take time listening to a lot of negativity and getting into strife every day. If you do, you'll not be fit to do anything for anybody. So prepare for His presence every day. Number two, lift your voice in thanksgiving every day. Number three, the city was moved as they proceeded toward Jerusalem. The city was stirred up. Multitudes started to ask, who is this? And we know what happened as they went on into the city. The scripture says that Jesus entered into the temple. So point number four is the temple was cleansed. He went into the temple and he found in the temple money changers, people buying and selling doves, involved with their own selfish gain and interest. But Jesus cleansed the temple, got rid of the money changers and he said, you've made my house a house of thieves and robbers, but it's meant to be a house of prayer. And then he brought in the hurting and the broken and the needy and healed them Amen. right in the temple. Amen. And they were healed. His house is a house of prayer, a house of communication, a house of fellowship, a house of life, a house of love, a house of unity. His house is. Amen. So he got rid of the things that was holding back the presence of the Lord. And his presence cleaned the temple, cleansed the temple. And people got healed. Power and anointing was released. Amen. John 6, 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. God doesn't speak any negative words. His words are spirit and life. His words will lift you. His words will give you hope. His word will show you a way forward when it seems impossible. His words will show you that you can be forgiven and reconciled no matter what mistakes you've had or, or made or wrong choices. His word will build you up. So the temple was cleansed. They began to reach out to the whole city. And I believe we should be reaching out to the prodigals in our family, reaching out to the neighborhood, reaching out to the wider world, <coughs> reaching outside the church, reaching to the lost. The hurting and broken are everywhere. And God is getting us ready for a mighty harvest. And as they cleansed the temple, they came and were saved and healed and blessed and restored. And this is our day. This is our moment. Number five, honor in the house. And I believe God is restoring honor. So we honor the leading of the Holy Spirit. We honor his word. We honor each other. We respect each other. We add value to each other. We bless the community. There's a radiation of God's presence going out from the house of the Lord and from you as, as people of God because you carry his presence. The power of his presence radiates from you. Amen. Because we live in his presence and sickness and disease has to leave. 
negativity, unbelief, depression, because of the presence of the Lord, amen? And he is here to renew us. Scripture says in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, that we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And I don't believe that the Lord wants anxiety and depression and fear or sickness and disease in his temple. We are the temple. The Holy Spirit lives in us. And so we need to get more aware of his presence. I love the song we sang at the beginning. Your presence, Lord. This is what I long for. The power of his presence will enrich your life. It will bring health to you. Scripture says also in Proverbs 4 that his word is life to those that find it and health to all their flesh. The more you meditate on the word, the more you spend time in his presence, the more we'll be conformed to his likeness. The more we'll be empowered to influence wherever we work, right in the city or in the the workplace, wherever it is. Broken lies were brought in, number six. And lastly, children sang again. Amen. When the atmosphere is right, children will sing. Young people will run to Jesus. When the atmosphere is right, the family will be put right. Healing will come in broken relationships. Reconciliation where there's been hurts and disappointments. The Holy Spirit works. His presence makes the difference. And so in this story, as I, as I conclude, it is a story that really is relevant to us. Jesus is there, ready to take a journey, but he needed the two disciples. It doesn't take a large number to work with them to begin with. And as the start of the journey and prepared the way, and they started to worship. And as they progressed, Jesus was seen lifted up. And people said, who is he? As he entered the city, the city was stirred. Healing happened. The house of the Lord was transformed. The influence of the kingdom was increased. The vision of God was fulfilled to reach out to our broken hurting generation. Through the power of his presence, we can make a difference today. Let's stand, please. Thank you, Father. I want to give an opportunity very quickly for any who have a need here tonight, and I don't want you to go home the same way as you came, because we have an opportunity, you may never have an opportunity like it again. The power of His presence. The power of His presence. We're going to pray for different needs tonight, and we'll be doing this the next two nights. But I asked you now for a moment just to Close your eyes as you stand before the Lord and just say, thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you, Lord, for your love. And thank you that you have included me in your plan. Thank you that you have included me in your plan. I tell you, God has included you tonight. He's not excluded you. You're not isolated. God is not ignoring you. He loves you. Thank you, Lord. And so I want to ask as our heads are bowed, is there anyone in this room tonight who's not sure you're right with the Lord? Have the courage to just lift up one hand. Jesus lifted both hands on the cross. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you very much. God bless you. Anybody who feels you're not right with God, anybody else, go ahead, put your hand up, say, yes, I want to be sure I'm right with God. I want to be sure I'm born again, I'm forgiven. I want to be sure the guilt is gone. I want to be sure that all my mistakes that I've made, and we've all made them, that he has moved to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Anybody else, you want to be assured of salvation. You want to be assured of eternal life. You want to be sure that heaven is your home. Don't gamble with your eternal soul. Hell is forever and it's torment beyond description. But heaven is blessing forever. If you're not sure you're right with God, go ahead, put your hand up high. Say, yes, I want to be sure. If you're a backslider away from God, say, I want to come back tonight. God bless you. Thank you. Just go ahead, waiting for another couple of minutes. 
anybody else want to come back to the Lord or want to be assured of salvation? Go ahead, put your hand up. Join the others who have responded already. Okay, while we're still in the attitude of prayer, I'm going to ask if you will all please repeat this prayer from your heart after me. For the benefit of those who are coming to your salvation tonight, who are coming to be restored, coming to receive assurance of salvation. Just repeat it please. Say, O God, I come to you in Jesus' name. O God, I come to you in Jesus' name. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. And I know I cannot save myself. Tonight I repent of my sin. I ask you, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I believe you are the Son of God. I invite you, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I surrender to you. And by faith, I receive the gift of salvation, the gift of eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let me just pray over you. Father, I pray for assurance on every person that's come to you tonight, those who may be backsliders or those that have come for the first time. I pray for assurance of salvation. And I thank you that we receive it now. You said that all who would receive the abundance of grace and gift of righteousness would reign in life. In Jesus' name. And those of you who have said that prayer, I'd like to speak with your pastor or the leadership would like to speak to you, I'm sure, before you leave and give you some literature. Now, those of you who have sickness in your body, we're going to speak against it tonight. And we're going to serve notice on it to get out. Our trespassers must get out. Amen. And these are trespassers. Yes. How many of you have sickness or disorders in your body? Put your hand up. God bless you. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Many people are raising your hands. Okay. Are you ready to receive? Yes. It says it's those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness that begin to rule and reign. So you have to do the receiving. He's done the giving already at the cross. You don't have to wait for God to do it. He's done it. Yes. By whose stripes you were healed. Yes. So now lift your hands one more time and say, yes, Lord. Yes. I'm ready to receive. Yes. And now I'm going to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to touch every one of these precious people. Yes. I ask you to let your healing power and anointing yes. be released and flow yes. like a river. In the name of Jesus, receive your healing. It's already yours. Receive your healing. I rebuke every sickness, disease, and infirmity. In Jesus' name, be loose from your infirmity. In Jesus' name, be healed. Be healed through and through. From every form of sickness, every form of infirmity, be made whole. In Jesus' name, right now, take your healing. Take it. Receive it in Jesus' name. Thank you for your healing power. I command all pain to leave you. All discomfort go in Jesus' name. Be made whole completely. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, lift your hands and praise Him. Give Him praise. Give Him praise. Thank you, Lord. I want to pray for the area. Father, I speak blessing over this whole region. I speak blessing over this church and the leadership. I speak blessing over the congregation. I speak blessing over all the workers and all involved in any ministry. I say in Jesus' name, you have the favor of God upon you. You have received the grace and the gift of righteousness. You are already blessed. Everyone in this room, you're really blessed. The hand of Almighty God is on you, and the favor of God is upon you. He has received you into his kingdom. Accept that invitation. And I speak blessing now upon the region here, all the churches in the area. I speak blessing over the people of this particular part of the city. And I pray in Jesus' name 
that there will be a manifestation of your presence. Amen. Just as powerful as it was when Jesus went into oh, Jerusalem. Lord, that people will say, who is this? Yes, that the place will be stirred and moved. Hallelujah. Thank you for the power of your presence. Hallelujah. The power of your anointing. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 information on today's program, contact us today. CCN 547 Antrim Road, Belfast, County Antrim, Northern Ireland, BT 15 3BU. Telephone 02890 779 552. Email ccn at ccnorg.com. Check us out on Facebook and YouTube and visit our website ccnorg.com. <laughs>